Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Breakfast yet? I'm waiting for Chester to get back from the depot. Somebody told him there's a telegram for me. Telegram? You should have left it there, man. What? A telegram usually means somebody's coming to Dodge looking for you. Or that you've got to go somewhere and look for them. Either way, it spells trouble. <laughs> well, if it wasn't for trouble, Doc, I wouldn't have a job. Well, then you ought to quit. It's a poor thing when a man has to make his living off of other people's troubles. Uh-huh. Tell me, Doc, how long has it been since anybody came to you and told you how good they were feeling, huh? Say, now. Oh, you know, I hadn't thought about it. Well, <laughs> I guess we were pretty much alike after all, man. <laughs> well, hello, Chester. Hello, Doc. I got it, Mr. Dillon. Well, what are you looking so glum about, Chester? What does it say? Well, you better read it. It's kind of private-like. Huh? U.S. Marshal, Dodge City, Kansas. Coming to get married. Noon train, Saturday. Meet me. Signed, Mavis McLeod. Oh. Oh, well, Mavis McLeod. Oh, that's a right pretty name. Oh, she's pretty, too. See, where's she from, anyway? You really going to get married, Mr. Dillon? Hey, you're pretty foxy, Matt, keeping this so quiet. Now, wait a minute, you two. If you're all through talking, I'll tell you something. <laughs> yes, quiet, Chester. This is an important moment. Well, I'm listening. All right, all right. Now, this may be kind of a shock to you, but yes. uh, since you're both friends of mine, I thought it'd be best that you be the first to know. <laughs> yes, yes, Matt. Yes, yes. Uh, I am not about to get married, and what's more, I never heard of any Mavis McLeod. What? Well, she still might be pretty, man. I don't care if she looks like Lily Langtree. Well, but, Mr. Dillon, ain't you even going to meet her? Well, I may meet her, but right now, let's go get some breakfast and talk about something else, huh? <laughs> that, Mr. Dillon. Straight up noon and there comes a Santa Fe right on time. Yeah. Well, it's troubling you, ain't it? No, no, no. I think trains should run on time, Chester. Yes, sir, that's what I mean. Hey, look. There's Miss Kitty going into the depot there, see? What? Huh? Chester. No, sir, Mr. Dillon. I swear I haven't said a word to her about this. She's probably expecting some mail or packages or something. Anyway, she didn't see you. Say, how are we going to tell Mavis McLeod from anybody else? I don't know. Look, look at there. there. There's a girl. Would that be her? Well, I told you I never even heard of her, Chester. How would I know what she looks like? Uh, that little girl's right pretty, Mrs. Dillon. She's the only female there. Uh, okay, let's go ask her. I'd judge her to be about 18, wouldn't you? Yeah, about. Oh, my. 
say she is pretty. Uh, excuse me, miss. Yes? Uh, I'm Matt Dillon. Oh. Well, maybe you can help me. Uh, or maybe. I'm looking for the U.S. Marshal here. Do you know him? Oh, I'm the Marshal. Oh, you are? Well, then you got my telegram. Yes, I did. It, I said, that's right. You didn't have my name on it, did you? <laughs> well, of course not. How would I know your name? <sighs> oh, my goodness. You didn't think I was coming to marry you, did you? Oh, how awful. I mean, how awful for you. <sighs> well, I'm still a little confused, Miss McCloud. Oh, <clears throat> Oh, uh, d- d- excuse me, this is uh, Chester Proudfoot. How do you do, Chester? Well, I'm proud to know you, ma'am. Uh, miss. Oh, I'm so sorry, Marshal Dillon. I guess I should have explained more in the telegram. <laughs> well, that's all right. Um, uh, who did you come here to marry? I don't know. Uh, you don't know? Well, not yet. I just got here. You two are the only man I've met. Ah, uh, Chester. Yes, sir. Yeah, go over to the depot there and see if you can find Kitty, will you? Yes, sir. I sure will. Uh, tell me something, Mavis. Uh, how old are you? I'll be 19 in December. Uh-huh. Now, where are you from? I won't tell you. <laughs> well, why not? Because it isn't polite for a gentleman to ask a lady so many personal questions. <laughs> All right. But why did you send me that telegram? Because I thought I'd be safe with you helping me. Well, helping you do what? Get married. Oh, don't look like that. I'm not crazy. They need women out here, don't they? Well, don't they? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they need them. And I'll make a good wife, too. But, of course, it'll have to be the right man, Marshal. I won't marry just anybody, you know. Uh, and you can stop shaking your head like that. I found her, Mr. Dillon. Oh, my. Oh, uh, Kitty, uh... This is Mavis McCloud. Hello, Mavis. Welcome to Dodge. Why, thank you, Kitty. Uh, Kitty. I uh, know, Matt. Chester told me all about it. Don't mind the marshal, Mavis. Sometimes he's a little slow to understand these things. He most certainly is. Why, he's been looking at me as though I were a bug of some kind. Uh, you take care of her, will you, Kitty? And I'll, uh, uh, go try to figure something out. He'll be okay, Matt. And, uh, uh Kitty, don't, uh, uh, uh... Don't worry. I won't take it to the Texas Trail. Yeah, good. Uh, you let me know if you need anything, Mavis. Uh, besides a husband, I mean. What a pair. What a buy. We're talking about king-size Chesterfield at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular. They're the quality twins. The best cigarette ever made. Either way you like them, you get the same highest quality. Same low nicotine. The same wonderful taste and mildness. A refreshing smoke every time. So change to Chesterfield. America's most popular two-way cigarette. Buy a carton today. You get highest quality with king-size Chesterfield at the new low price. You get highest quality with Chesterfield regular. What a pair they are. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. The next few weeks, I thought and worried about Mavis a lot. But I should have known I was wasting my time. She met a young fellow called Barney Wales, and three days later, they got married. Kitty called it love at first sight. Uh, but anyway, I knew Barney, and he was a sober, hard-working cowboy who started a little spread of his own not far from Dodge. It was a good match, and it looked like they were going to make out fine. At least I thought so, until one day when I was sitting in the office trying to keep cool. I'm looking for Marshal Dillon. Oh, come in, fella. It's not fella, it's mister. Mister. Oh, Uh, remember that, huh, Chester? Oh, yes, sir, I surely will. From St. Louis, Marshal. 
Now, let's not waste any more time, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind, silly. Who are you looking for? You know who I'm looking for. Mavis McCloud. I thought so. Well, what do you want of her? That's my business, Marshal. Well, maybe. Where is she? Oh, what makes you think I'd know? She sent you a telegram from St. Louis. I knew she was headed out here somewhere, so I checked. Mavis isn't the kind to arrive in a place unknown. I see. Well, are you going to tell me where she is? Well, not till I know why you want to see her. And I'll find her myself. She's around here somewhere. She's married, Staley. What? She's married. Now, why don't you go on back to St. Louis and forget about it, huh? Who'd she marry? Well, what difference does it make? You're not going to bother her. We'll see about that. In the meantime, I hold you responsible for this, Marshal. Okay. Let's say I'm responsible. Why don't we settle it right now? No. No, I'll find her first, Marshal. And after I've killed her husband, I'll come looking for you. Well, forevermore. There's about the bloodthirstiest man I ever did see, Mr. Dillon. He's going to kill everybody. Well, he might try it, Chester. I think I'd better ride out and talk to Barney Wales. No, sir, not today. What? Well, Barney and Mavis, they're in town today. I seen them over at the Dodge house this morning. They're staying the night there. Well, then I'll go find them there before Lou Staley does. <laughs> Marshal Dillon, come on in. Hey, Mavis, it's Marshal. Hello, Marshal. How are you, Mavis? Oh, I'm fine. I mean, we're fine, aren't we, Barney? We sure are. You got to ride out and have dinner with us some Sunday, Marshal. Mavis here is the best doggone cook you ever saw. Oh, it'd be strange if a girl from St. Louis couldn't cook. Why'd you say that, Marshal? Mavis ain't from St. Louis. At least why she never told me she was. It doesn't matter where I'm from, does it, Barney? Of course not. But how'd the marshal know? There's only one way. Lou Staley told him. Lou Staley? Who's he? Well, I don't know, Barney, but uh, he says he's going to kill you. What? For Mary and Mavis. Oh. He loves you, too. Is that it, Mavis? No. Not exactly. Well, what then? I made up the name McLeod, Barney. My real name's Staley. There's only one thing I want to know, Mavis. Yes? You love him? I hate him. Okay. Let him come, Marshal. I'll fight him. No. No, you go out to your ranch. I'll take care of Staley. I never run from a fight in my life, and I don't aim to start now. Please, Barney, It's no use arguing. If this Staley's looking for me, he can find me. What's he armed with, Marshal? Six gun. Carries it in his belt. Okay. I'll go about my business here like always. But I'll sure keep one eye open. Hello, Marshal. Oh, uh, hello, John. Evening, Ma. How are you, Kitty? I was in here with Chester a little earlier. Where were you? I took a walk after supper. Anything to stay out of this saloon for a while. What do you want me for? Well, there's a man over there at the bar, Kitty, that uh, tall, dude-looking fellow. Hmm? You see him? Who is he? Well, his name's Lou Staley. Did you ever hear of him? No. Yeah, I thought maybe Mavis McLeod might have said something about him. She's never mentioned him. 
But I've hardly seen her since she got married. What's it about, Matt? Well, Staley's kind of disappointed over Mavis getting married. Says he's going to kill Barney and, and me and, well, I don't know who. Or... He is? Yeah, he followed her out here from St. Louis. So that's it. Jealous ex-lover, huh? Mavis' real name is Staley. Kitty. It is. Well, I guess Mavis kind of fooled all of us. I can understand Staley wanting to kill Barney. That's not my business how Mavis messes up her life or anybody else's, but murder's wrong, Kitty, no matter what the cause, it's wrong. Matt, look. Yeah, I see her. You've seen us, too. Hello, Marshal. Kitty. Uh, sit down, Mavis. You shouldn't be in here, Mavis. I know, Kitty. But I had to come. Where's Barney? He's talking business with some cattle buyers over at the Dodge House. He doesn't know I'm here. It's no place for you, you know. It's good enough for Kitty, isn't it? I work here. I explained all that to you. Well, I didn't come here for fun. I ran into Chester out in the plaza, and he told me I'd find Lou Staley here. I've got to talk to him. Probably won't do any good, but I've got to try. Well, he's over there at the bar. I know. I saw him. But I didn't dare walk up to the bar, not with all those men watching. Okay, Mavis, I'll get him. No, I guess I won't have to. (laughs) I knew I'd find you sooner or later, Mavis. I want to talk to you, Lou. It's too late for talk. I told you what I'd do, and I'm going to do it. Lou, I want to talk to you alone. Go out back, Mavis. The door's right over there. Nobody will bother you outside. Come on, Lou. Won't do any good, Mavis. You know it won't. I don't like this, Kitty. Why not? Talking's better than fighting, isn't it? No, talking isn't going to stop him. You know, there's something wrong about him, Kitty. It's sort of like he can't hear or see anything but himself. Like he's all alone in the world. Any man in love acts like that, man. Well, maybe. But if I didn't think he'd just keep coming back, I'd tie him up and throw him on a train for back east. I wish you'd do something. Matt. Yeah, come on. Matt, look, it's me. Yeah. No, she's still alive. You go up to Staley, Matt. I'll take care of her. I'll get Staley. But I'm going to carry Mavis over to Doc's first. You better come along, Kitty. Well, Mr. Dillon, that's the worst thing I ever heard of. Shooting a woman. Well, Doc says she's got a fair chance, Chester. You're going to tell Barney about it, then go after Lou Staley, huh? I'm going to do more than that. You are? What? Uh, You'll see. Uh, Well, I hope Barney's still here at the Dodge House. I hope so, too, Chester. Maybe that's him standing over there. I know that one fellow. He's a cattle buyer. Oh, there's Barney with his back to us. Oh, Barney. How are you, gentlemen? What are you doing here, Marshal? Something wrong? There he is, ain't there? I can tell. Yeah, there's something wrong, Barney. Well, what is it? Tell me. Where's Mavis? Now, wait a minute, Barney. Look, do you trust me? Well, sure, I do, Marshal. Of course, why shouldn't I? Well, no reason, but I want you to think about it when, uh... When you wake up. All right, gentlemen, don't interfere in something you don't know anything about. Chester. Yes, sir. Go get a rope and tie him up, but fix it so he can walk. And when he comes to, take him to jail. Well, Mr. Dillon, he... Do it. Okay, sir. I warned the 
cattle buyers there not to say a word to anybody about Barney. And then I went out looking for Lou Staley. I tried every saloon and gambling house and dodge. But finally I gave it up and went over to the jail and got Chester. It was past midnight when we entered the Dodge house once more, had a talk with a clerk, and then went up to Barney and Mavis' room. You think Staley's run off, Mr. Dillon? No, Chester, he won't run till he does what he came here to do. You stand over there, Chester, so you'll be behind the door when it opens. Huh? All right. Staley's sure going to be surprised if he does come here, ain't he? Yeah, unless that clerk downstairs bungles it. Well, all he's got to do is say Barney come in a while ago and went upstairs. That yeah, sounds easy. But he might get scared and say anything. <laughs> What's there to be scared of a man who shoots women? Now, the clerk doesn't know about that, Chester. And besides, Staley may be crazy, but he's armed and he's dangerous. Yes, sir, I guess you're right. Say, Barney got real wild when he come to and found himself all tied up. I had a terrible time with him. He blamed Wait a minute. Me. Quiet, Chester. You think it's him? Wales, you coward. Where are you? Hold it right there, Staley. No. cigarette buy today is Chesterfield. There's Chesterfield king size at the new low price. And for your convenience, Chesterfield regular. What a pair. Either way, you get the taste and mildness you want. A refreshing smoke every time. Either way, you get highest quality, low nicotine. Buy a carton of Chesterfield. They're best for you. In regular or king size, you can get them either way. The best smoke ever made, the Chesterfield you buy today. Smokers coast to coast are changing, it's a cinch to do. Here's all you have to say to get the one that's best for you. Chesterfield's for me, Chesterfield's for me. You just say it's Chesterfield's for me. Doc's office at the top of the stairs, Barney. She says Mavis is going to be okay, huh? Yeah, she's doing fine. Now, here we are. Wait a minute, Marshal. Yeah? About last night, I'd have found Lou Staley somehow, and I'd have killed him any way I could, Marshal. That might have been murder, Barney. Yeah. I guess this is the first time I ever thanked the man for knocking me out. Well, let's go on in now. Hello, Matt. Barney? Where's Mavis, Doc? Uh, she's in the back room there. <laughs> and except for a little fever, she's coming along fine, Barney. Of course, you'll have to stay quiet for a few days. You can't be moving her around. <laughs> um, can I see her now, Doc? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Mavis told me about the shooting, Matt. You know what happened? No, what, Doc? Well, she tried to take Staley's gun away from him, that's what. They were fighting over it, and it went off. He didn't try to kill her at all. Huh? 
You know, it's funny about Staley. Oh, what, man? Now, most men would have tried to kill a wife that ran off and married somebody else. Wife? Oh, now, you don't mean that. And Mavis seems like such a nice girl. Now, you never know. Marshal Dillon? Uh, yeah. Mavis would like to see you. Oh, okay. Hello, Marshal. Mavis? There's something I want to tell you, Marshal. Oh, okay. Ronnie already knows. I told him yesterday after you left. Now, now go on. It's about Lou Staley. I know what you think. But I've known him all my life, Marshal. And Lou was crazy. There was something wrong with him. I guess I was ashamed of it or I'd have told everybody sooner, especially Barney. Uh, you're not responsible for his being crazy? No, wait. Lou always did say he'd kill any man I married. That's why I ran away. Now you're asking an awful lot of him, Mavis, crazy or not. Marshal. Lou Staley wasn't my husband. He was my brother. Mavis, you've been nothing but trouble to me ever since I got that telegram. And I don't want to ever see you again. <laughs> Unless it's across your dining room table some Sunday. <laughs> King size. Yes, L and M goes king size. Now, L and M is king size as well as regular. Both have the same low price. Both have the miracle tip for the effective filtration you need. Yes, it's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine, a light and mild smoke. Yes, this is it. L and M filters, just what the doctor ordered. Buy a carton, king size or regular, both at the same low price. L and M filters, America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Eleanor Tannen, and Sam Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Next week at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the Western Frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>